Hey guys, Josh from SoccerReviewsForYou.com, bringing you my first impressions plus on feet video of the brand new Umbro Velocita 2 Pro in the black sulfur and white colorway. Now inside the box, all you get are the shoes themselves. They do not come with any extras. So let me get these guys out of the box really quickly and we'll take a closer look at the brand new Velocita model from Umbro, which is their thin synthetic ultra lightweight offering. So in today's video, we of course are going to go over all the tech specs and performance features. We're gonna take a look at the weight of the shoe as it is a very important characteristic of this particular model. We're gonna take a look at how these things fit and feel on feet and just basically cover everything you need to know about this brand new shoe from Umbro. So if you're interested in learning more, please stick around and watch the entire video. If you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link down below in the description of this video uh, where you will find buy it now links where you'll be able to pick these guys up for their $200, $195 retail price out of the UK as that's pretty much the only place where these things are available at this point in time, but they do ship worldwide. Uh, so again, if you're interested in the pair, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. And with that being said, let's get right into the review. To start things off, let's take a look at the weight as that is kind of the main feature of this shoe or the main reason why a lot of people will consider this shoe at all. So I'm gonna weigh this pair for you today in real time using this scale. Keep in mind, this is a brand new pair in a size nine US. We're gonna throw them on the scale and you can see that they weigh in at 5.6 ounces which is about the same weight as the 2010 F50 Adi Zero from Adidas, which is a very, very popular and for the most part groundbreaking shoe in terms of how light it actually was. Have we seen lighter shoes since then? Yes, are there lighter shoes out there? Yes, although they're not particularly durable. Uh, so right now, as far as a lightweight shoe that you can buy and expect to last a decent amount of time, this is as light as it comes in comparison to the original Velocita Pro these are about 0.35 ounces lighter, which is kind of surprising to me considering it has the exact same outsole and the upper, while it's made from the same material, feels ever so slightly thicker to me. So kind of strange that it is lighter, but it is as the scale is showing. And just for the sake of uh, the units being changed, they weigh in at 158 grams, about 11 grams lighter than the previous model. So if you're looking for that ultra lightweight feel, this is definitely gonna provide that for you. Or if you want something that is more similar to the original F50 Adi Zero models from Adidas, this shoe definitely does have a similar design overall, as well as a fairly similar feel, both in terms of touch on the ball, the general fit, as well as of course the weight. As far as tech specs and performance is concerned, they haven't changed a lot going from the original Velocita to the Velocita 2. What they've really tweaked are two main elements on this shoe, the way the upper is supported and just the general shape of the upper, which improves the fit. So overall, I think this is a better shoe in comparison to the original, but like I said, for the most part, it features a lot of the same elements. Now, starting off with the upper, it still is made from a textured microfiber synthetic. Uh, it's just as soft, feels pretty much the same to the touch, um, and when you're making touches on the ball, you will notice that it feels ever so slightly thicker, but that's about it. It's still a very thin shoe and not too far off from the original, which is not a bad thing. It's a thin synthetic shoe with really no extra padding, providing a pretty good barefoot feel. Is it the best thin synthetic out there? No, but it's very good and is definitely gonna offer uh, the premium feel that you would expect from a $200 soccer shoe. As far as the surface is concerned, you can see that it does have a shiny finish to it with some interesting texturing. Uh, it's slightly grippy on the ball, but for the most part, it's not like a rubberized element or anything like that. Uh, they are kind of touting it as some kind of a wet control or all weather control element. And again, it's just a minor texturing with kind of a shiny finish to it that feels pretty grippy when it's dry, a little bit more slick when it's wet. But overall, you shouldn't have any issues with the upper of this shoe in pretty much any type of uh, weather conditions. As far as the rest of the upper is concerned, uh, the way it's supported is for me the biggest difference coming from the Velocita to the Velocita 2. You can see on the outside, the shoe does not have the external A-frame cradle anymore. Instead, that is fully internal, which I'll show you in just a second, but that's not to say that there aren't external supports. You can see that there are external supports in the form of the matte black areas that run basically 
the length of the shoe pretty much all the way around the outside, especially in the forefoot and toe box area. And it's basically just an extra layer of material that's a little bit less stretchy than the actual microfiber. That's reinforcing the forefoot area and the midfoot area in the parts of the foot where you're going to be pushing off and putting a lot of stress on the upper. So those are nice elements that on the Velocita 1, I really found that the A-frame cradle was positioned in such a way that when you pulled the laces tight, it caused pressure points exactly where the cradle was and it just wasn't particularly comfortable on my foot. Was it uncomfortable? No, but it didn't feel kind of seamless or streamlined when you pull the laces tight. You could feel certain points being tighter than others, which I wasn't a big fan of and you don't get that sensation on the second generation model here. They spread it out a lot better on the outside and then on the inside, like I mentioned, where the A-frame cradle is now positioned, you can see you have it here on the medial side as well as on the lateral side. It's just a thin layer of synthetic material that's fused directly to the inside of the microfiber, again, reinforcing that midfoot and forefoot area. Uh, keeping the shoe from kind of stretching and just giving you a more responsive feel overall. So this is a more responsive shoe in comparison to the original Velocita and also a lot more comfortable in terms of the support being more consistent as opposed to in thinner strips where it just felt more targeted on your foot and caused some minor issues with pressure points. Uh, the laces still run down the middle as you guys can see. The tongue is made from the same material as the rest of the upper which I really like. You get a nice consistent touch. Uh, it does have two little uh, kind of cutouts in the tongue which I think is a cool little feature just to help hold it in place um, throughout the playing session which is a nice little thing. Uh, the cut at the heel is not particularly low for this style of shoe. It's got a deeper fit in the heel um, which is not a bad thing at all. Just kind of unusual for this style of shoe. Normally they're a little bit lower cut at the sides and at the back, but this one does have a deeper fit. So heel slippage is not an issue. Your heel's locked in place really, really nicely. You do of course have an external heel counter as you guys can see, which we'll get to in more detail in just a second. On the inside, the heel liner, heel liner is a uh, smooth synthetic leather material with perforations throughout. There's a decent amount of padding back there considering how light these things are. Certainly a lot more padding in comparison to the original Adidas F50 Adi Zero models. And the liner, as you guys can see, is seamless. There's no real cutoff points there. Uh, so issues with rubbing are very unlikely. Um, as far as the insole is concerned, it's actually a pretty decent insole considering how light the shoe is. Again, uh, you do have a mesh liner on top, perforations throughout. It's just a single layer of this black foam, but it actually has a decent thickness to it. So uh, step in comfort, not an issue at all. And then moving on to the sole plate, um, it is a one piece construction um, where you do have an external heel counter that Again, looks a lot like the original F50 Adi Zero. And actually now, if you look at the um, new A16 Plus Pure Control, the laceless shoe, it has a heel counter that is very similarly shaped to this, just rounded as opposed to having this angular design. But we did see angular designed heel counters from Adidas in the past as well. Um, it's just a hard plastic material that prevents your heel from slipping from side to side and also gives you a little bit of protection at the rear of the shoe, which is nice, although the rest of the upper really won't provide any protection due to how thin it is. Um, and then of course you do have the sole plate, which looks kind of thick as far as the plastic is concerned. It looks thicker than the um, sprint frames we used to see from the F50 Adi Zero line. But when you're actually wearing it, it feels pretty thin. And I think that's due to the length of the studs. Um, the actual layout of the stud pattern is, again, very similar to what we've seen from Adidas, just with slightly different shapes. You kind of have this more diamond shape going, going through the lateral side as well as in the heel. And then on the medial side, you have these um, conical studs with a little cut out there, kind of look like mini Pac-Mans, but uh, the stud pattern overall works really well. Um, it's a firm ground stud pattern and given the studs having a fairly large surface area, they don't dig in particularly well if there's harder ground. Uh, but speaking of harder ground, I did find that when you do use these shoes on harder playing surfaces, stud pressure can be a bit of an issue just due to the thickness of the sole plate and it being quite soft and flexible. So uh, if you aren't playing on really nice fields or at least decent quality fields um, and you tend to play on a harder ground more often, probably not the best option for you. You may run into issues with stud pressure. But again, if you're playing on decent quality natural grass fields, you shouldn't have any issues at all and the traction will be uh, pretty good too. Obviously you have reinforcement through the midfoot area just to stiffen it up, although it is still quite flexible. It's a very flexible shoe in general, which is not a bad thing. And then one other element that I wasn't crazy about with the Velocita, the original that they've kind of maintained on this one, are these little kind of extension pieces they have going down the sides of the forefoot. Uh, depending on how the shoe fits your foot, if your foot hangs over the edge ever so slightly, you're gonna feel the pressure from these little points, um, which again, 
is something that you will get used to, but something that I found a little bit annoying for the first couple of wears with the original and kind of felt the same thing with the Velocita 2 Pro as well. So uh, something to keep in mind if you do have a slightly wider foot, it's not necessarily a narrow shoe, but if you do have a wider foot, you can definitely tell that the shoe isn't necessarily best suited or well suited for wider foot types, which we'll talk about more a little bit later during the on feet portion of the video. So as far as tech specs and performance is concerned, it's an impressive shoe, very lightweight, thin synthetic, good traction, fairly comfortable considering how light it is. And if that's the style of shoe that you're looking for, this is a very solid option. As far as aesthetics go, I think this is a pretty decent looking shoe. I mean, it's typical Umbro. They haven't done anything too drastic as far as design is concerned. It's pretty much an all black upper. This of course being the launch colorway. I'm not crazy about the shiny finish. To me, shiny just looks a little bit cheap, but it doesn't look bad by any means. You have the Umbro Double Diamond logo in uh, what they're calling sulfur, but what's essentially just a, a yellow color, but a standard yellow, not like a bright highlighter yellow color that we see a lot from other brands. Um, so you have that Double Diamond logo on both sides of the shoe in the midfoot, the Umbro branding going down the back of the heel as well. I like the contrast in the white tongue, although I don't, I'm not sure that the black laces were the best choice to go along with the white tongue. Uh, it of course does say Velocita right here. I like that you have the matte black contrast in the external support cage that they've implemented. And then it's kind of cool as well that the heel is a different color than the uh, kind of front half of the shoe as far as the sole plate goes. You have the black heel counter with the white sole plate through the forefoot. And then of course that sulfur yellow color in the tips of the studs and the Umbro Double Diamond logo under the heel as well. So overall, I think it's a pretty good looking shoe. I really like this particular colorway. Um, perhaps they should have launched with something a little bit brighter, but for me, the black, yellow, and white actually looks pretty good. So let me know your opinions on how these shoes look down below in the comment section. Do you like how they look? Why or why not? And with that being said, let's move on to the on-feet portion of the video so we can get a better idea as to how these shoes fit and of course what the sizing is like. All right, so here is a look at the Velocita 2s on feet. On my left foot, I have the stock black laces that come with the shoes. And on my right foot, I have a pair of white and black grid pattern SR4U replacement laces. If you're interested in a pair of replacement laces for yourself, be sure to check out the website www.sr4ulaces.com. you find a direct link to that website down below in the description of this video. Now, in terms of how these things fit and feel on feet, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there are two main elements that they changed from the original. The first is the way the upper is supported, which just feels more even on this particular shoe, which leads to a more comfortable fit, in my opinion. And also they modify the overall shape of the upper. This is slightly lower volume, a little bit tighter overall, and it just makes for that no extra space on the inside of the shoe fit, which is kind of what you're looking for from any type of thin synthetic soccer cleat, especially one as light as these. These fit a lot better than the original. There's no extra space like I mentioned. And the overall feel is also very, very comfortable, which is surprising. The synthetic material is uh, very thin, but also quite flexible. It does have a decent amount of softness to it as well, which is kind of nice. It's not padded in any way, but the inside lining material just feels good against your foot. And there's really not much in the way of break-in time required. Everything is quite flexible from the get-go. As far as the shape is concerned, like I mentioned, it is a tighter fitting shoe, uh, but there is some decent width to it. It's not super narrow. Again, the only thing you have to consider is uh, these little pieces that hang over the edge that aren't necessarily uncomfortable, but it is something that you will notice the first couple of times that you wear them just because your foot does hang over those little kind of pointed edges on the side of the sole plate. But again, once you get used to that, it's not something that really bothers you at all. Um, and again, for a tight fitting thin synthetic soccer shoe, they are pretty comfortable, but again, not necessarily well suited for wider foot types. You're not gonna get much stretch out of this upper. The way they fit from out of the box is for the most part, the way they're gonna fit for their entire lifespan. So with most super thin synthetic shoes, if you have really, really uh, wide feet, probably not the best option. As far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing my usual size nine US here and the fit and the length is absolutely perfect. So if you are looking to order a pair of these for yourself, I would strongly recommend going true to size in order to achieve the best possible fit. All right guys, that is it for my first impressions of the new Umbro Velocita 2 Pro. If you guys are interested in more content on this shoe, be sure to check out the review page on my website. That'll be the very first link 
down below in the description of this video. On that page, you'll find high quality images of this exact pair that I took myself that'll give you a better idea as to how they actually do look in person. As well, you'll find buy it now links on that page if you're interested in purchasing a pair for yourself. So again, first link down below, go ahead and check it out. Also expect to see more follow-up content on this shoe on my channel in the very near future. If you have any questions at all regarding the Velocita 2, leave them down below in the comment section. I definitely will get an answer out to you. If you enjoyed today's video, found it helpful and informative, be sure to support it with a like. Subscribe if you haven't already for daily videos on all the latest and greatest soccer gear. You can find all my social media information linked in the description as well. And other than that, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video. And as always, thanks for watching.